Yo, yo, yo. What's good, y'all? Y'all come on in. I got a rush. I got something to do in a minute. Get on in here. Welcome, I'm DK Hammonds, a digital theologian, bridging your theology and your technology together. Today, I ain't finna talk about tech, I'm finna talk about some believers. We gonna do some fruit inspection <laughs> and have some ready conversation. Do me a favor, share this out with whoever needs to see it, your public view, so they can get in here and participate in the conversation with the digital theologian. Gassed. I'm ready. I'm charged. Let's go, y'all. Yo, welcome to the show. Welcome, 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 welcome once, welcome twice. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. I am the one and the only. DK Hammers, do me a favor again. Drop your information in the chat. Let me know where you're listening from. Um any additional conversation additives put them in there i can see everything and add it to the board i definitely want you to participate this is an interactive show we can see your comments and i'm gonna post them all right on the screen for everybody to visibly see uh so without further ado what is good i hope your day is well hope you know your week is going good do me a favor too if you are not busy in september uh, we are doing a women's conference at Embassy City Church. I would love for y'all to come through and fellowship with your boy. I may not be there, but I'll be around. <laughs> I'll be around. Y'all come fool with us if you're cool with us. Oh, my stuff looks real crispy. You can tell I've been with God. Hallelujah. What I got to talk about today, man, I sit back, watch y'all had these conversations i didn't say nothing didn't post nothing i try to i'm trying to be positive in this season these saints they want to push me over the edge I try to mind my business but we got to talk about it you can see the title clout chasers are they doing this for money are they doing it for attention Come on, get in the comments, let me know. What's good, Ant? Y'all, are they doing it for the money? Or are they doing it for attention? Or could they be doing it for both? We gotta figure that out today. And we, got, we gotta come to some agreements. Because some of these saints believe that that's the way to go. And I'm here to stomp on the devil's neck. That ain't the way to go. That ain't what God intended when he was on the Mount of Configuration, Transfiguration, sorry. But y'all be pressing the luck. I want y'all to find something better to do other than press the luck. I do. And the first thing I want y'all to do is share this with somebody. And I already in the comment section. Both, bruh. For the clout. So they can get this money. I'm addicted to the money. Everybody, man. Are you serious? <laughs> Let me get to the money, yo. And I'm over here tripping because it is very telling to me that the saints have shifted their pair of you. Well, going after the things of God is not the most popular thing to do. Right? It's not the most popular thing to do. They, they, they would much rather not, not have patience, not have the fruit of the spirit, not have none of those things, but they'll get on Instagram and chase this clout. And that I have a problem with, right? Why chase the clout? Why chase the money? When if you are doing the very thing that God has called you to do, those things come after you align with them. We are so busy trying to get on, trying to be popular, trying to chase, that we forget that our primary responsibility is to be obedient to God and follow after him. Or her, if that's your translation. 
However, I want to highlight that yes, we have a problem in the body of Christ. It ain't just your church. It's a lot of churches struggling with people who have the wrong motives. They got the wrong motive. Their motive is to be seen and heard, but their motive is not to do any work in the body of Christ. And that, my friends, is a problem. So your pastor can't address it, usually. Because now we have people that are censoring certain leaders. But I can. Some of you don't really love church. What you love is you love the residuals and you love the things that church produces. And you that I'm talking to, you are the individual that's clout chasing. I'm sorry that we had to do it this way, but it's necessary. Because what you see ain't really what it is. So let's define what clout means. I want to make sure that we have the people that are listening. They may not know what clout means. Got some definitions for you. Influence power, especially in politics or business. I like that. That's that's Oxford. So let's go to Urban Dictionary. (laughs) A very unreliable, untrusted source. So y'all can have a clear understanding of what cloud chasing is. I know that's what y'all go to anyway. (laughs) Cloud chasing person who strategically associates themselves with the success of a popular person or currently contemporary trend to gain fame and attention. This personality disorder is often resembled as riding a wave without concern for damage or integrity. That's actually a really good definition. Let's talk about some sentences that associate themselves with that. Shall we? Offset's alleged baby mama was a clout chaser because she lied about being pregnant with Offset's baby for nine months. She presented false evidence, went on social media, and presented claims and reports that were true. She was a clout chaser because she did all of that for 15 minutes of fame. J. Charity in the building. So we have a working definition of clout chaser. Working definition, evolving definition of cloud chasing. And let me tell you, some of y'all are sitting right in church, sitting in choir stands, serving on ministry teams, and your only motive is you're trying to get on to the next wave. And let me be honest with you, there are some of us in the body that had to wait a period of time. So there's no music. I want y'all to hear this. There's some people that had to wait. They were not giving ministry opportunities. They had to serve their way up the ladder, proverbial ladder, and they had to wait until it was time. And then God graced them when they walked into that opportunity. And so what you're trying to do is facilitate the grace of God in exchange for opportunity And in exchange for clout, God ain't in that. Yeah, we had to wait. And guess what else? We had to serve. And what I find very interesting in, come on, Jay Charity, we had to give. What I find very interesting, nobody wants to wait, serve, or give. Now, I'm not saying you got to wait 15, 20 years. I think that that level, and we got to talk about that too. I'm going to get there too. You ain't got to wait 15, 20 years to be put up to serve. In particular, if you have a skill set that the body of Christ needs or the kingdom of God needs to expand itself. So what I have found is 
in various denominations and various belief systems. Waiting is a badge of honor. But what we don't also look at is how we penalize people in waiting like we're hazing them to be a part of our organization. And God ain't in that either. So there's a delicate balance to making someone wait and holding them back because you don't want them to get too far ahead of your game. Now, I agree with that. A prolonged wait can produce attention seekers. We can see your motive when you just sitting and you just gotta serve. But I wanna also challenge the other side of that coin, and that is that there are certain people in your church, in your community, that have the skills that you need. And some of them need to be expedited. Some of them need to be coached along the way. There is a delicate balance. That balance shouldn't lean toward hazing. Because these hands don't haze. They praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, man. There's a lesson in the way now. I don't disagree with that. And sometimes I would say to that same point, we are putting people up prematurely for whatever reason. They deserve to have a good old fashioned sit down until it's time, until they took a little longer, right? But then there's other people that you know has the skill, they have the heart, they have not damaged or bruised anybody. Those people deserve to be pushed to the front of the line because they've been graced to do a certain thing. You should let them. But what we see is we see more of the extreme than we see of the true. And that's another piece about the cloud chaser. Because leaders that, that are occupying said spaces, because see, what, they, what they're trying to do is put the right people up, I get it, but in the process, they're, they're becoming enslavers and gatekeepers. <laughs> y'all, y'all ain't trying to talk. I'm trying to get to it. I'm trying to get right to it because there are a lot of leaders that are enslavers and gatekeepers. They don't want to see anybody progress beyond the place of them even. And then it becomes a thing about ego and so forth and so on. So if you're just coming in, welcome to Drop the Mic. I'm the Digital Theologian, DK Hammonds. I'm so glad that 10 to 12 of y'all are watching this. Share this with your friends, your community that need to hear this. Uh, we're talking about class chasing. Are they looking for attention or are they chasing the bread? There's another layer to the conversation that there are people who are highly skilled and they're trying to do this for the bread alone. They feel like they should be properly compensated. I'm not mad at those people. I'm mad at their intention in their heart. Because see the clout, those types of people, it's all about the intent of heart. And some of us really need to sit down with our hearts, man. Thank you, brother. Brother Hill, we used to hoop back in the day. Some of us need to sit down with our hearts. Those hands and those hearts, that's out here trying to do what they do, need to do better. What are you saying? <laughs> Both attention and the bread. Come on, keep these comments coming. I'm putting them up. Yeah, we need some wisdom. Keep these comments coming, y'all. Y'all in there, type these comments up. Let's go. Yeah, you need some wisdom. Yeah, you need somebody with some wisdom. And let me say something to senior leadership. You need somebody in position who is not afraid of somebody who has a better skill set than you. This little thing that y'all doing, man, it's really, it's really, 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 it's really, really, really taking time off the clock. We could be 20 years ahead, but you want to stay 20 years behind. Okay, let me slow down. And says. This is what wisdom and leadership needs to be able to discern who needs to be pushed forward, who needs to sit and be developed. 
So, Ant, what you're saying is some of us need to be at a place where we can examine who is ready to lead and serve. You can't do that trying to choose what the urchins are going to wear that Sunday. You can't do that trying to do all of these task-oriented things. You know, I, I, I would say in the pandemic, one thing that I've seen that we have not done enough of is we haven't done enough of training people for the positions that they hold. Right? You hire your homie. I don't know who this is, but thank you, God. That's, God bless you. You hire your homie. You, you hire your friend, but you, you don't think to hire the most competent individual that's there. Uh, so not to go down the rabbit hole, because I want to stay focused. We're talking about cloud chasers that exist in the body of Christ. Thank you for shouting me out. I appreciate it. Jay Charity, where it says it? Stop hiring these imbeciles. Hire competent persons who can help push you out of your own way. God bless you. Y'all make sure. Let's take a pause for the cause. I am sponsored by Ministry Up, a boutique consulting agency that's helping pastors and leaders develop and be discipled for the next generation. Please, please, ma'am, please, sir, go holler at Jay Charity Wear. Email her for your ministry consultant needs. She's also been doing ministry placements to help pastors and leaders and church and laity connect and move forward. So please, ma'am, please, sir, do that. Thank you so much. Ministry Up is in the building. Yes, indeed. What's up, Brother Williams? It's my guy, Dallas Baptist University. Pay attention. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. I'm humbled by that. I, I really appreciate you, man. All right. We've taken our break. Let's get back to it. We talk about these cloud chasers. So let's get the working definition again. A person who strategically associates themselves with success of a popular person or a currently contemporary trend to gain fame or attention. So watch this. You got people now who think that it's okay to show up to church Gucci down to the socks. <laughs> if you come up in here with that nonsense, Gucci down to the socks. And you come to the south side of Dallas, baby. Pay attention. <laughs> Very quickly. Keystone Polk, on down the road. South side of 20 to Fort Worth. Corsicana. You come to these areas. Gucci down to the socks. Talking about you trying to preach a gospel that's not rooted in prosperity ministry. I can assure you that there's going to be a fellowship of the minds sooner than you think. <laughs> I can assure you. Let me tell you something. I have grown up going to hood churches all my life. So I know how to check the temperature of the room. And hood churches don't mind people having nice things. What always gets them a little uneasy is when you attempt to showboat, to show out, to do all of these things. Okay, that's when those people in that hood church gonna start calling folks, asking around. Hey, what pastor do when he ain't here? <laughs> oh, child, he he work at the bingo bingo hall. Oh, why pastor got this? Why is he always Gucci down to the socks again? They don't care about you having the nice things. You deserve nice things, leader. But the problem becomes when a nice thing overshadows the gospel. It overshadows. 
People are hurting. We are still in a pandemic. And you fluff and you clout chasing because you want to be seen and known by people who don't even necessarily like you. Now, I'm not mad of, of a leader that can afford what they can afford. Listen, if you go to work every day, you deserve to buy anything you want to. But what those people are going to go back and see is how did you treat the people in the community they did have? What you do with that old car you traded in or you leased when you could have gave that away? How much rent have you paid in the community? What type of community projects that have you done within that community? All, all we looking at is past the coming up and not us. And please don't tell me you subscribe to that work harder met methodology. No, some people don't have the ability to work harder. They were given a different construct to work with. And here you are being their spiritual leader and you chasing clout. So here's what you do. You chase that clout. So guess what your members start doing? That's the chase of clout. Shoot, let me, let me see if I can get that credit card number off give a little today. Let me see if I can take that tithe number off out because you know, they ain't gonna miss it. I might as well do me because I'm gonna do me. You're creating this tension because you're trying to floss. I think that's so ridiculous because we don't see Jesus who owns the cattle of a thousand hills, who owns all this stuff, who's all powerful, all knowing. We don't see him just like, you know what, man? Watch me turn this water into Cavassia. We don't see that. Hey, what? Hey, man, watch this. I ain't gonna even say nothing to shouty. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna send a word. Cause I'm dope like that. You don't see that. You know what, man? I'm I'm gonna stay in this tune. Cause <laughs> yeah, I'm Jesus, and that's what I do. You don't see none of that. And yet, people of God are trying to replicate the world. Let me tell you something. That's that's a real problem when the world can't tell us from them. And if you stun every Sunday, Gucci down to the socks, <laughs> fake Stacey Adams, huh? Fake chains. You're creating a culture that that is the actual finish line. When really, what we need to create is a culture that we want to see people saved and their lives changed. But y'all don't want to do that. Y'all don't want to do that. Well, some of y'all, let, let me say that. Because there are some pastors that's actually committed to God. Committed to God, committed to his work, committed to building up the kingdom. They over there taking care of their own little vineyard. They ain't messing with nobody. They ain't, they're living right. They love their spouses. They love their children. And they're simply trying to be faithful over what God has given them. And them be the pastors that y'all don't want to listen to. Let's talk about y'all sometime. Y'all want to listen to the pastors that you feel like have made it. When the Bible doesn't give a disclaimer on the accomplishments of the believer, what it says to us is he that hath an ear. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking back to me in this chat. He that has an ear, let him hear. But y'all like y'all ears to be itching all the time. And that has to change. So from the pulpit to the pew, we must change our methodology when it comes to, are we seeking the attention? From that to, do we want to be in front of the audience of one? Because that is what matters the most. The audience of one, the pleasing of God, 
the upbuilding of his kingdom, the betterment of his believers. That's what we need, y'all. So for every pastor that's out here listening under the sound of my voice, that you have been pastoring through a pandemic, you have worked hard, you have toiled in the vineyard, and you see these cloud chasers, and they're on TV, and they're everywhere, and everybody is chasing after you. Let me remind you very quickly that God has not forgotten about you. Woo! <laughs> God has not forgotten about you, brother, nor sister, no man, no sir. God still believes you're chosen. He still believes in your gift. He still believes your call. Continue to do the work of the ministry, y'all. For y'all. But for those who are cloud chasing, let me, let me, let me serve notice real quick. Everything in the body of Christ, everything that is not of God has an expiration date. Your time is coming. Your time is coming for you to move out the way. And the time has come for God to raise up the standard. He's kind of tired of y'all clout chasing. He's looking for something different. He's looking for the creatives to be unleashed in the churches. He's looking for an imaginative leadership that's willing to think outside the box to cultivate something different, right? He's looking for individuals that, that loves God, family, and their community. But he's not interested in you, Cloud Chasers. I've been in the game for a long time. I got some friends on here, like this guy right here, Andre Vaughn. He's seen me before I actually started preaching. Been a long time. And I can tell you the many days that I could have sat on the streets with my guys and got it like I needed to get it. But I chose something different then to live and be a standard for God's people. I've lost friends. You're going to lose friends when you're not chasing clouds. But man, when you are chasing Christ, when you believe in the very thing and with every being of you that Christ is the centrality of your belief system, man, you move different. Yes, you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. You move different. Yes, you do. You're unstoppable. Right? You think you are not at the place that you need to be at. I beg to differ. You're exactly what God needs you. You think that you need another pulpit to preach in? Well, guess what? You don't. You simply need to go where God has assigned you. Stop looking for another podium and look for a place to be deployed. Because that's what God is looking for in this season. Stop looking for the cloud, partner. The cloud dissolves. The flower will wither. The crown's faded. But his word, man. Y'all got me turned up in there. James Franklin's one of my youth kids. They tell you, y'all, y'all should check my receipts. I got plenty of them out here. Right? And I think it's important. But we ain't chasing cloud. We chasing after the heart of God. We want people's lives change. Thank you, LB. We want to see things develop. This music is brought to you by another sponsor of mine, Terrence Hobby. Please go check out him uh, on all your digital platforms. Thank you, Terrence Hobby, for this. Kim Ola, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Just trying to give y'all some hope, man. Some hope. Don't be looking at your pastor like he chasing clout. Look, your pastor got three jobs. Stop hating. Y'all got to stop hating. Some of that's hate. Y'all ain't gonna stop me from doing what I'm doing if I work every day. <laughs> but if I'm scamming to get it, I can almost bet that ain't gonna be a God. All right, I'm at my 30-minute marker. This has been real. Please put your questions or comments in the chat before we get out of here. We've been talking about cloud chasing. We've been talking about people chasing clout money and attention when we need to be chasing after the very thing of God his heart we need to have a tender heart we need to have clean hands we need to have integrity we need to have character those are the things that matter to God I promise you
God will lift you up if you keep your hands out that cookie jar of the clout. He'll lift you up. I'm talking to somebody right now. You think that God will not lift you up. You know you got skill sets to be used. Let me tell you something. God is in the season of turning over the ground and placing people where they need to be. You got to know that. You got to know that. Watch this. The scripture talks about they that way upon the Lord. Look, look what it says after that. What happens? Their strength gets renewed. They begin to mount up. <laughs> they begin, watch this, to run and not get weary. Walk, not faint. All because you waited. I want to encourage you. Right now, brother, my sister, my family, wait on the Lord. Your due season gonna come. Your due season gonna come. When is my due season coming? Listen, your due season gonna come. See, how you produce seasons is based upon how you distribute seed. Man, I'm in my zone. I need to slow. <laughs> how you determine the season is how you distribute seed. Go look at the scripture. Some seed fell on good ground, stony ground, thorny ground. So what are you doing with the soil that you got? Are you watering it? Are you tilling it? Are you being faithful to it? Or are you looking at somebody else's grass next to you and you trying to determine how can I get my grass green like yours? It costs something to get your grass green. Woo. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking in this chat, but I know I'm telling you. It costs something to have green grass. Your water bill gonna go up. You gotta buy, you gotta buy certain seed. You gotta even know what kind of grass you got. But most importantly, you gotta be able to Proceed. Get the crown together while you wait. And I promise you, if the ground is right and the seeds are right, the harvest is plentiful. And you know what the scripture says about that, right? That the harvest is plentiful. But man, when I get that harvest, I don't have people, enough people around me. You're, so watch this. While you're waiting, make sure you throw that seed right. Make sure the ground is right. And then make sure God sends you the people you need to help you in the place that you're in. That ain't chasing clout. That's called building community. That's building community. COVID taught me one thing that we got the, com the building of community all wrong. Get that ground right. Sow that seed. Get it together. Get good people in your life. Watch things blossom while you're waiting. So I know somebody on the side of my voice is saying, Lord, teach me how to wait better. Because I need something from you. He's teaching you. Well, she's teaching you, whichever your pronoun is. They're teaching you how to wait. While you wait, don't chase no cloud. Chase after the heart of God. Do what God loves and appreciates and adores. A cheerful heart. He loves that. He loves that. Chase after that, y'all. 35 minutes in. Y'all just not catching it in on it 35 minutes in we're talking about cloud chasers we've discussed a lot we've gotten some things some tools some resources to kind of push us to the next dimension of our lives man if you feel led I, 
I'm just saying I normally do this. Cash at me. I am DK Hammers. If you feel led. I only if you do. I don't need it. If you feel led. You do what you need to do. You do. You obey God. That ain't chasing clouds. Because see, if y'all don't know this about me, sometimes in my cash app, I redistribute wealth to people who need it more than me. All right, y'all. Continue to support your boy DK Hammers. I'm going to keep hitting y'all across the face on Thursdays. We got to get some guests in here. Some leaders, some think leaders, some thought leaders, some people. It's not thought leaders, some atheists, whatever the case may be, and have some conversations, some real conversations. Um, also, another sponsor of mine, please, please, please be on the lookout um, for, uh, what's, what's the name of my show? Black Light Digital? Where is, where is, uh, come back over here, Jennifer. Jennifer Benson. Me and Jennifer will be coming back doing six episodes together very soon. Talking about tech. Bless you, whoever just sent that. I am DK Hammonds. I am DK Hammonds. Talking about tech. Talking about marketing for, specifically for African American, brown, and ethnic people. Uh, so we'll be doing that. We have a, a good conversation happening with that. It's going to actually be live filmed. So I'm excited about that. That's another one of my sponsors, Blacklight Digital. Uh, that's another friend of mine. Please support Jen Benton if you have any marketing and technology needs. Not technology. Marketing and social media needs. Jen Benton is, is that, that one to do that. Well, check this out, y'all. I normally do 30 minutes. I got three more minutes. If y'all are willing and able, look at there. All right, check this out. That's what I want to do. Thank you for sending that. <laughs> Mark, I love you, Mark. Never says nothing, but always present. I love that guy. I'm going to, I'm going to be sending that out to people. Somebody's going to get some breakfast, some coffee on me for listening to me kind of rant and develop. So if I inbox you, matter of fact, let's do this. Y'all put your cash apps up. Y'all put your cash apps up. Those of you who are listening. Those of y'all who want to sew, I'm DK Hammonds. And I'm just going to go through and redistribute to a couple of y'all. Coffee, lunch on me. I am DK Hammonds. Marco, man, yeah, you late, bro. You got to catch that replay. <laughs> put your cash app up. I want to sew into some of y'all. Some of y'all have supported me for years. Uh, and I want to definitely be able to be a blessing to you, coffee, lunch, whichever the case may be, uh, and be a giver to my community. There's no need for me to get seed and not distribute it well. And that's what I always want to do. God has been enormously favorable to me and my family. So I got to do that to y'all. Uh, so uh, I know you're in a meeting, Pastor. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Catch that replay. I'm going to get off here. At the 40 minute marker um and we're gonna go from there again thank y'all so much if you want to sew i am dk hammonds is the cash app to sew please man please sir take a look at that because of what i'm doing is redistributing to those who actually put it in the chat send you some coffee on me uh for those who are distributing to me i, I just want to be a a magnet to give people hope um to show people that they're love thank you Sister Wilson. I got my, hey, shout out to the AKAs in the room. They always support me. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. Hey, y'all make sure y'all support uh, my boy right here. Neotis Frat. He has a cigar business it's distributed all throughout the Metroplex. Let's make sure we take care of him. He's probably one of the few black people that's actually making and selling cigars. He's Frat. Salute to you, Frat. Love you, man. Continue to work. We appreciate you. 40 Minute Mark is coming up. I'm out of here, y'all. I appreciate y'all for letting me do what I do. But I had to get that off my chest, man. So, let's go. Y'all stay up. Some folks who put the cash app up gonna receive a little seed offer. Some folks who don't, they won't. God bless y'all, man. I appreciate it. Peace.